Okay, this is a computer build. I got an EVGA 600 watt, 80% uh, bronze, you know, certified. And then, I don't know if you can see it here, but I got the um, one terabyte uh, Western Digital hard drive for $50, $55. And then here's this uh, <clears throat> DIY case, which seemed very nice, and the reviews on it were really good. It was $37 off of Newegg. And it's got a clear plastic side panel, and it's got fans in the in this area in the front here, a fan in the front, a fan in the side, and a fan in the rear. It comes with those three fans, along with the um, two 2.0 USB ports on the top there, and one 3.0 USB point port down in the middle. Okay, you can see the inside of the case, the back of the case. Power supply goes down below, and then it has a little it has a little uh, flip out screen filter to keep uh, dust from going in under the power supply. The case is uh, big enough that you can um, fit a long card in, and you can see the power supply um, and connectors. A combination six pin plus two makes eight pin, and then a um, another 6 plus 2 8 pins. So you have two 8 pins or two 6 pins depending on what you want there. You got another two 4 pins here. You got your SATA connectors and you have, let's see, here's a, a Molex. So you're pretty set for wiring on this uh, power supply. 600 watt power supply for $40 from Amazon. This thing weighs four and a half pounds so it's not cheesy as far as weight goes. You know, you get the factory ones that only weigh like a pound and a half or something, and it's like, there's no there there. Now there's uh, four screws that hold this thing in, in the back, and the best way to do this, in my opinion, is to, is to t get your screws and screw them in so you know they're going to screw in, because sometimes there's a few flaws and they're going to have to be forced a little bit. You know, you can check to see if the thread is appears to be right, but Putting them in beforehand just makes it so you don't have to, um, if you ha you know that they go in. So when you line them up and if they won't go in, then obviously uh, it's not because they don't go in, because you already know that they go in. Okay, here's the back of the unit, and here's the power supply. The fan goes on the bottom. You know, you have your screened area on the bottom. So the fan goes on the bottom, and it's going to come out, out like this both sides off you can get get at them a little bit easier and away you go you're in now don't plug it in and turn it on until it's hooked up to the board and the rest of the uh, things are in place because it's not good to turn a power supply on where there's no nowhere for the the rest of these wires that are coming from the front here that um, these here these are going to go to the motherboard and that's your USB and uh, audio um, controls and the on and off switch and don't lose your um, any of the nuts and screws and bolts these are for set off you could see them in the back of the uh, board here hard to see but these guys they set the motherboard you know so there's some distance but there's a gap between the board and the paddle panel otherwise the uh, metal parts on the motherboard would short out on the on the case then here's the fan in the front of this unit. The fan in the back. And the fan on the side. And the clear plastic uh, side case. Fan on the side and the clear plastic side case. Okay, this is the back. The side. And the front, you know, and then this this plastic in here is removed, and your DVD can go in there, so you have access to the DVD. Okay, this is the uh, Optiplex 790. I put my new drive in here. SATA connections. This is the PCIe bus. Can't fit a regular size card in here because the slots in the back are extra narrow. I had to pull the uh, graphics card out because I didn't have a connector. 
It's got uh, four gigabytes, so basically not even one four gigabyte card. It's two two gigabyte cards, and a little cooler for the. Look at the connectors. So when I, if I put it back together differently, I'll have an idea how they go. And these are the um, in the front here is the uh, DVD drive. enough. This set here looks like it goes to the on-off switch in the front. And I don't see where the, there's some kind of wire here. Go into the power supply. So it looks like the uh, hard drive's the only thing that's not working right. I can't get Windows to run. This thing runs Linux off of uh, the puppy disk. You know. No problem have been found with this system so far. Do you want to run the remaining memory tests? Okay, you can see the uh, power supplies in the bottom. We've taken the motherboard out. And basically, we've taken the 790 and just disconnected the wires, but after photographing them so we can put them back if we have to. If you don't photograph them first with a camera video of them, it's kind of difficult to tell later what went where. At least you'll have an idea if you take pictures. But you line up the holes case blue fans this is a 7850 card in here and it doesn't quite cover over the uh, SATA connectors but if it was longer I think it might you could have some shorty angle SATA connectors that would work on the first and the third there's only three SATA connectors on this board it's the stock board and here I have um, two hard drives and the power supply. This thing runs a little hot at 50-55 degrees without even a load on it, so that's not all that great. I'll have to put a T4 Coolmaster cooler on it, I think, even without overclocking. I don't like it to be that way. And so here, I've just opened up the old hard drive, which is this one. I put both of them in, plug them in at the same time and then open them up until you get to um, each one of the same folders here and then press control and drag and drop them over to the other side and then that's ba basically just making a copy and putting them on your new hard drive so you still have your old stuff and then you can wipe your old hard drive if you were giving it to somebody else or your old hard drive is still working like it used to in your computer if you're replacing your hard drive with a bigger one in your own computer, you can do a clone on it. And a clone is a much faster way of transferring everything over. You don't have to reload all your programs and all the Steam games and all that kind of stuff. You're just making a clone, except that it's going to partition it so that, you know... Except you can't do that when you're changing computers, because although you can clone windows and it'll still work the same if you're going into the same machine the problem is windows sees each machine as being different so in this case i have an optiplex 790 and in the old case i had an amd with my own motherboard and a processor and it did, and it didn't see them as the same and so windows wouldn't run on the optiplex even though it had loaded and ran successfully on my old machine when I put the hard drive, the cloned hard drive with Windows on it into the Optiplex, it refused to run. So the only thing you could do at that point is to put a, uh, put my Windows uh, version I have on the DVD into the DVD player, and have it boot from the DVD player, and then wipe out the drive and overwrite it, and reformat it with a fresh version of Windows, and then it worked fine. Okay, there's the uh, 
bottom of the case. Here's the front of the case, and I had to put the um, USB port from the 790 at the bottom there. It has to be plugged in, otherwise it'll set off the f a fault because the computer checks for all the things plugged in and functional. There's a temperature gauge for the PSU. So you plug them all in and hook them up some way so that it works without giving a fault code. And um, this has the lights for the hard drive that flash and whatnot in it. But I don't think... Okay, the standard uh, power supply plug, the power switch on the is kind of proprietary on the 790. This is it. You just press that in or press it out and it starts it up. On initial startup, when you first turn the power on, it spins for a couple of seconds, then turns off. And when you hit press the power button again, it turns on and leaves it on. If you press the power button again, it turns it off. So what I did is I took the orange and the white wire from this case, which goes to the power switch, and I cut it off and I put it on the red and the black wire coming to the previous power switch and it works fine this way. So I'm going to solder it in, tape it up, and then the power switch on this unit will work. Okay, finished product. You got the uh, plexiglass side case, you got a fan on the side, fan in the front, and these are all the big 120 millimeter or four, four inch fans. A fan in the rear, also large, and then your power unit is down in the bottom there. And there's uh, CPU Z showing. You're running a i5 2500 at uh, well, it should be at 3300 megahertz. And if we switch it over to the memory, you can see that I get uh, 12 gigabytes. 12 gigabytes and it's running at uh, 1330 so the DRAM is half that and then MSI Afterburner just kind of shows you where you're at with there's your CPU usage at the time okay you can see we're uh, doing 99% on the GPU at 60 degrees centigrade. It's a 7850 card running about 150 watt max. And uh, the memory is 1,000 megabytes, so it's half of its 2 gigabyte uh, amount. The RAM is 2,000 on the machine, and the CPU is running at, uh, I don't know, 45 degrees, and the frames per second is about 43. Now we're looking at the amount of juice this thing is using. So we're looking at the, the amount of juice that it's currently drawing, 160 watts. So even though everything's kind of pumped to the max, it's 160 watts. So a 430 watt power supply is going to do just fine for a graphics card that pulls 150 in the, in a 100 watt uh, CPU.